right. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Every Day is a New Day show. My name is Kim O'Neill, and I'm excited to have you here. And also, I'm excited to share today's guest with you. We're going to be talking today about vibrational alignment in your business. And I want to also say reclaiming your authentic self and, and getting to that place. And we're going to be doing it all with a very special lady who I've not only had on the show before, but I consider a very very special person and a friend, and I'm excited to bring her back to the show and to share her with you. You're going to love her. But before we move on, what are we going to do? We're going to take a moment to ground our energy, to center ourselves, and shake off yesterday. Take a deep breath in, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, letting it go, letting the past go, whatever that means to you, whether it means something that's been been clouding your headspace for uh, days on end, minutes on end, the last hour, the last 20 years, whatever it means. It's always a gift you give to yourself when you take the time to release what's weighing you down. Bring yourself back into the present moment because this is where you have your greatest power. So I hope you joined me in doing that and that you're taking this moment to simply feel how good that feels. You can do that at any time, anywhere, and I'll make a huge difference in your day. I know that for sure. Okay, so next I want to share with you a quote that I believe is going to factor into today's conversation and from a source that I absolutely love. Abraham Hicks said, Anytime you feel good, you found vibrational alignment with who you are. Anytime you feel good, you found vibrational alignment with who you are. Think about that. Take that in. Anytime you're feeling good, that is not a that is not something to to dismiss. There's relevance. There's huge high value in feeling good. When you're feeling good, that's your indication that you're having vibrational alignment with who you authentically are. And I'm not going to say much more about that because I want to go ahead and uh, get closer to bringing today's guest in. So let me share a little bit about her with you first. I'm going to tell you all about Suli Yates. Suli Yates is an advanced channel, the founder of HeartSpace, and a featured author in the newly released book, Success with Source. Suli helps spiritual seekers to accelerate their awakening journey by connecting them with their true purpose, inner wisdom, and higher self. She helps to equip her clients in navigating life with ease, heightened awareness, and a genuine acceptance of themselves and others through heart-centered communication and the transformative power of unconditional love. Suli firmly believes that living from the heart not only benefits individuals, but also has a positive ripple effect on the entire world. And today we're going to be talking about practicing vibrational alignment in your business. And we're going to hear so much more about how that comes into play. Welcome, Suli. Hi, Kim. Oh, it's so lovely to be here with you again. It's so, so lovely. Thank you. I love your introduction. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. I... I'm glad to have you here. Um, for those that don't know, you know, after today's conversation, um, I absolutely recommend checking out our previous conversations. We've had at least two or three other conversations with Suli. Um, she's filled with so much wisdom and beautiful energy and insight. So um, I'll put on YouTube, I'll put little some little tags so people can easily find that. But Suli, I'm excited to share. To, let's first... If I had confetti, I'd spread that. Congratulations <laughs> on your new book. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Honestly, the women, the uh, the other authors are so amazing. And as the, the book developed, I mean, we have one of our meetings yesterday, and the energy of the book is just amazing. And if you're sensitive, you can tap into it now. It's it's amazing. And, and I get the sense that when you open the book, it's almost like this light shines out and engulfs Aww. the reader. I mean, I'm getting a real sense of it now. There is such, there's going to be such juice in there, such uh, insights and wisdom and inspirational stories in there. Something for everyone something for I everyone it. it's going to be an amazing book 
Yeah. I, I love stuff like that. And so let's go ahead and show everyone what the book looks like. And of course I have a, I have a picture from the very early days of the book. So it doesn't actually, um, but has, have Suli's name on there yet, but success with source learn. Oh my God. I got to close to read this. Learn from women who practice vibrational alignment in their business. And I think it's a beautiful cover. So that's a great start to connect people with the book. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I'm so, so excited about it. I'm, I'm a newbie when it comes to being an author, but I don't think it's going to be the last time because I love it. Um, yeah. The whole process of writing my own story, the way that Dina, the beautiful publisher, Dina Murray, uh, structured it for us, I ended up having a real transformational journey, a real deep healing in putting my story on paper. Of course, the first draft was way too long. But what it did was just amazing that touching in with those tender places, reminding yourself actually of how amazing we all are, how we get through, and I call it the gauntlet of childhood because it really is like that, I think. And how many of us actually don't have, probably nobody, any stories in their past of, of hardships, of trauma, of, of difficulties, you know, and yet we manage mostly to get through. And it's kind of that journey through that I talk about. I, I love the way you put that, the gauntlet of childhood. And I agree. Um, I, I've said in the past, you know, no one gets out unscathed. I, you know, we, we all, we, we've got different stories and yet can be very similar elements of things we had to learn, overcome. Um, and we all go through it. It's it, it, no two stories are alike. No one's story is, you know, I, I don't believe in comparing stories to each other. Um, I, I agree. I agree. And, and I, I totally get what you're saying about writing your book. I believe anytime we are about to publish something, it's a whole birthing process in itself, just the, the writing process before the actual book is birthed and published. So I, I totally get that. So we're, we're going to talk about, I know some, some of your, your childhood, your backstory, and we're also going to talk about how it all connects to vibrational alignment in one's business. I'm actually, I'm going to say to you, where would you like to start there? Okay. Well, I suppose the fact that I was completely shut down and unaware, unaware of how I was feeling, unaware of my emotions and the journey through to beginning that and it happened with me falling on my backside, literally with my body screaming at me, not having paid attention or not being able to be aware that my body was telling me pay attention. And, and then that was kind of the catalyst for the journey, the healing journey, the continuing healing journey, because I don't think it really ever stops, certainly while you're in physicality. Um, the healing journey that has brought me to this po point where I'm able to actually assist others um, to find their alignment, to to find a connection with their truth, and to bring their light out into the world. Yeah. Is that, is that... <laughs> yeah. Well, so what I hear you saying is you had experiences that that taught you about listen, the relevance and importance of listening to your body. Mm, exactly, and and uh, receiving the messages because we're receiving messages all the time, not just from our physical bodies. Just as simple as I need to eat now, I need to rest now. Uh, oh, there's a twinge here. Do I need to pay attention to that? My goodness, you're doing too much. Come on, slow down. Take a moment, take a breath, which so many people, and it's the human condition, don't pay attention to until it's woof, until you are put in position where you have to. But there are also signs and signals from the universe, from your guides, from from whatever you'd like to call source, God, goddess, all that is, um, there are always signs and signals. And it will be very dependent on your own individual journey and your own personality, how you receive those messages. For instance, I know, and I, you're probably the same, most of my friends are, I love feathers. And if I see a feather, I take that as a sign. I take that as a, a symbol of saying, we're here, it's okay, you're okay. And so sometimes my partner laughs, he says, no, it's because we've got a cat. That's a side. <laughs> it might be 10 minutes away from my home and there will suddenly be, there'll be, and there'll be white feathers generally. And, and sometimes you'll get a feather and it will point in a direction and you get a message from that as well. 
um, oh. yeah as soon as you walk out in, into the to the to the world from your house from your home even if it's sometimes if you set up an intention okay what message do I are you going to give me today or you can ask a question and just be open to receive and you will receive it it may not be in the way that you would imagine but it might be actually something quite funny and hilarious and you go oh my goodness <laughs> okay i get it i get it but, but you're receiving those messages all the time all the time and your body's giving you those messages all the time so it's kind of to be aware awake pay attention notice as with all life and that is part of the alignment process as well yeah and trust trust what you receive yes. not exactly. discount it exactly I I, I had um, I had never considered about the direction. I mean, I, I tend to look at all things that are surrounding, but that's one I hadn't thought of before. Is the direction that a feather is facing could be pointing towards something? That is that sounds really key. I, thank you for sharing that. Oh no, you're welcome. And, and it's not always the way, but you'll know if you look at a certain feather and you'll you'll be drawn to the direction it's pointing in. That for whatever reason it it might be that it's pointing back the way and it's probably saying no go back this way or turn left instead of right or perhaps there's something over there that they want you to pay attention to and as i say you will know you will know you will, you will start yeah. to get sensitive to what it means for you and it might not be any directional thing but sometimes it is sometimes it is wow yeah. Okay, so, and for those that don't know, Suli, you you danced, you were a dancer for many, many years. So this body thing really has relevance to you because you were utilizing your body in many ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and go ahead, say go ahead, say more about that. No, 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 carry on, no, I, you know me. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the edge of launching. And so it, you just give me a little gap and I'm, I'm away. So no, if you, you know, okay. and I have to apologize for jumping in and interrupting people. So no, if you haven't finished what you were saying, I do apologize. No, 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 you're fine. Um, and I get it. I, I sometimes do that too. Um, I was simply going to say, uh, would you like to share a little bit more about the story that you shared in the book that connects then with this whole vibrational alignment with one's business? Um, tell us a little bit more about what you, what you shared in there to the degree that you want to share it. Well, it's, yeah, no, that's a that's a beautiful question and obviously perfectly placed. Um, the interesting thing is, is that I was by my initial entry into dance. I mean, I, when I was a little child, I was like a wild child. I, you put music on, it'd be 12 inch records at that stage showing my age. I would just dance and dance and dance like a wild thing. It was the way I expressed myself. It was it was just natural as much as breathing to me but then I went to dance school and so and it was an old school way of teaching which was it was an old school way of teaching where it is they there's no encouragement or if there is encouragement they whip it out the way and give you something that will make you forget the encouragement so what wow. they don't understand and I, th I think it's because they think it's going to be a hard career it's going to be a hard life you've got to make them strong and I'm sorry, I could swear, but I'm not going to. Don't worry. Absolute rubbish. It may possibly work, and it did work for me in a way, because I used to be reduced to such pulp that this Aww. lion would appear from somewhere and I'd go, I'll show you. And I'd do it. But it was from being reduced to pulp and the mush. And there are some people that may thrive on that kind, but if you're sensitive like I was, but what happened was in that process is that I, my subconscious was imprinted with all sorts of false beliefs that then were my truth moving into the rest of my life. And it's kind of, I had a love-hate relationship with dance. I was always moving away from it and coming, being pulled back to it, uh, trying something else and being pulled back to it. It was obviously in my bones, but because of that early part, that little child got crushed really oh, that yeah. wild child got crushed but what was interesting is finding my path back to that wild child and I have to say I went to a couple of music festivals last year with my partner and that wild child came out to play she danced like no one is watching and I couldn't give a monkey's what anybody thought and it was 
wonderful. So I reconnected with that wild child. And that is very much alignment when you when you find that part of you, that that part of you that was pure alignment in its pure essence, that child of freedom before before they get shut down, before they get knocked down, before whatever happens. When you reconnect with that child and when you, you love it back into us, I call it like loving it back into that wild child, that that life itself, it's magic, it's magical because you're kind of igniting that within your life. And although I'm 60 something, <laughs> I am that wild, well, I am that wild child when you I are. dance the music on and, and I've got that sense of freedom and the music comes through me, I become part of the music and I just, oh, wonderful. And it's taken me a long time and every you know, now and then she'd raise her head and then she'd go back down again. Um, but no, she's there. I think she's there for good now. And yeah, and I feel her now, that kind of sense of music that yeah, I'm hearing a Shakespeare saying, if music be the food of love, play on. And it's just that sense of, you know, that igniting, the music igniting me and then becoming part of the music. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, I, I went off. <laughs> no, it's... It's beautiful. It's, I, I love that you use the phrase wild child. I, I tend to say reclaim your authentic self. To me, it's it's all the same. That's just another way to describe it. And I I can relate. I have my own experience of, you know, reclaiming my my inner child, my my wild child. And I think a lot of people, not everyone, I don't think everyone actually has experience like this ex exactly. But I think a lot of people do where at some point in the growing up process and in, in learning to adult, um, we can lose our, our playfulness, our, our, you know, the, our, the child in us that likes to just play and have fun and be goofy and silly and, and be free. And, mm. and I want to, you know, you mentioned your age and age is just a number. And some people, no matter at whatever age they get up to, they never reclaim that. They never step back mm -hmm. into that. And that's a, that's such a beautiful gift. Uh, so I, uh, so, so thank you for sharing your age because anybody out there who's thinking, oh, it's too, too late for me to be playful or do something, you know, I've never been a fan of like when people say, oh, you're too old to wear this or do that. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as too old. Um, are you living? Do you want to feel alive? You want to feel free? You want to have fun? You want to whatever? Do it because you're alive. You still can. So what it right? It's the gift of living to be able to do that. So that I just wanted to share that for anybody who's who's maybe thinking that uh, you know life has passed them by, but you're here today. You have a new choice in this moment, and you absolutely have all the permission to go ahead and and be you do the thing that is you in this world. Absolutely. And one of the interesting things I've discovered about aging, and my mum used to talk to me about this and she used to say things to me and I'd go, oh, what does she mean by that? Oh, what? One thing that, that people who are witnessing age don't realise, and it might not be everybody's story, but it's certainly mine. I am still a young person. And so when people see me or talk about <laughs> about my age or say or talk about me being going into the chrome stage i'm like excuse me what <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about and then i look in the mirror and i go oh right okay okay i'm always that young person i'm always that young person and in fact you are but it's kind of finding the the balance of being that that vibrancy of youth and also the learning of accepting the aging process or not, as the case may be. There are moments, but the lushness of it, I'm starting to get a sense of there's a beauty there and it's taken me a long while and I may still have those moments of forgetting. But, but yeah, you're still that young person. So when people speak to you and see, to speak to you as, a, as, a, as nanny or uh, the older woman, shall we say I, st I st still get a little bit puzzled I thought it's funny that people should see me that way because I don't feel that way I feel yeah. young vibrant ready to just get up and dance and not every day obviously but most days and so it kind of puzzles me and I have to remember that actually they don't 
see me that way and they don't know me they don't know that that's what i'm experiencing yeah. I, oh gosh, Julie, that, that could be a whole conversation there. I, I get that too. And, and that's why, and we're going to get back to for everyone, anyone who's like, why are they talking about age? How come we're not talking about vibrational alignment in your business yet? Well, I know we're getting, we're getting <laughs> well, there. It's, it all, it all it factors is. in. It is. <laughs> um, but I, I, I get what you're saying. And this is why it's so important to know, I'm going to bring that quote back up. It's important to know who you are when other people do not. And so, and if you are that sensitive person who, who maybe other people are looking at you and Suli, I'm sorry you had that experience in your dance class, because that is very um, unpleasant, mm -hmm. you know, people being overly hard on you, kind of contributing to you shutting down. Right. And when we shut down, we can feel like we're disconnected from knowing who we are, which is that connection piece to source. And, um, and so when other people don't know who you are, you can always know who you are. Remember that. So let's let's get into um, let's get into a little bit more about that that vibrational alignment piece and how it connects to one's business. Um, I, and you're a channel. It, why don't we start there? So for anybody who doesn't know what a channel is, will you tell everyone um, what that is and what you do? What is that exactly? Okay, okay. So everybody channels in those light bulb moments. It's not elitist or it, it, everybody does it um, and whether you're connecting with just the higher light information that's coming in at that moment or whether it's your own infinite self doesn't matter it's all kind of high vibrational but when you channel in my situation and it's not always the same some people can find their way to channeling on their own uh, and open to channel on their own but obviously I was so shut down it, that wouldn't work for me so I was kind of guided to a school where there was opening to channel available and okay. I found my way moving into that and so we had our channels opened and how they my guide likens it to is uh, tuning fine tuning a radio station cutting out all the white noise going straight to and again a symbolic representation straight to those higher frequencies because of course it's not literally like that it's just a way of connecting consciously with the concept of it um so no no interference i'm not a medium i don't i can and i do sometimes connect with those passed on um but it's more the higher frequencies uh, and the higher um the higher expression of who we are and who we be and the consciousness of that the collective is the 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 kind of collective consciousness that i tune into but viwamus like an essence of this consciousness is the one that tends to come through uh, you know yeah and I, uh, yeah so it's it's a way of connecting in it's a way of plugging into without the interference and also having that channel open so that whenever you choose to connect you're there whereas if you do it on your own sometimes some people do it naturally esther hicks lee harris beautiful channels um many of them probably did it on their own but that was not my story and i'm so grateful for the course that i did that with the transmissions and what have you and the activations that assisted me because at that stage i had no idea what it was anyway and no idea no idea what awakening your light body was which brought me into Okay. that course uh yeah and who to say if i saw opening to channel i'd probably think what does that i'm not interested but because it was awakening your light body something was like oh oh that's that's like I, I don't know what it is but that sounds like something for me <laughs> well in in what's coming up for me right now is is so you you channel and provide this as a service to other people and your community yeah. and heart space and all of that but as you were just describing it, I can also see, because you, you mentioned how we all do it, we have all have the capability to do it, but the more we hone it, what I'm hearing is this is something that really helps a person be able to hear their intuition and trust their intuition, is what I'm hearing. Yes, absolutely, because um, in fact, I think Lee Harris um, tuned into his soul, asked questions of his soul, that's how he started, um, which I was very fascinated to hear recently. And I thought, what a beautiful way to start. Um, and some people can do that very easily. Again, at the stage that I was doing it, shut down and also unaware of who I was, where I was, what I was. <laughs> I really had no idea. Um, and just beginning to grow up at the age of 24-ish 
at that stage, but you then some people no, some people never get to grow up really because of whatever their situations or right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does um so how does this come into play with um being important for one's business, having vib vibrational alignment with source in your business? Well, I guess the answer to that is the fact that I it is my business. It, it's absolutely 100 percent my business. I'm I I'm trying to even no, I couldn't even imagine doing anything other than something connected and aligned. Uh, I would I think I would vanish into a heap of nothingness if I had to do a nine to five where there was no kind of connection or alignment. I would it would. Yeah, no soul destroying comes to mind. Um, mm. And that's no judgment of people that do. Of course, I know. That's, that's my personal experience and story. Right. I'm gonna. To be, I want to. I want to interject yeah, 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 for, yeah, 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 for yeah. a moment because because this will also air on LinkedIn with people. Lots of people who do have some sort of nine to five job. And oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. yes, I want to affirm what Suli's saying. This is the whole point of this is that there's value in having alignment with whatever it is you choose to do. So for Suli, it's not right to have a nine to five. But if it is right for you, then that's key to pay yeah. attention to. And a person's body would tell them, right? I used to have Absolutely. a. It, it wasn't really nine to five. It was more like. Uh, 10 to 8 p.m. or whatever, but it's 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. But, um, you know, I used to have an a, a office job that was satisfying to a degree, but I get it was that like soul crushing element because it's like, I know I'm meant to do something else. And it's like, what the more we resist that, then the more pain, discomfort we have when we're trying to make ourselves do something that's not in alignment with who we are and what we feel called to do. So I just wanted to add that element for anybody yeah, who's yeah. hearing this and going, wait, what? No, no, no. You tune in with you. So, okay. Okay. So we get back yeah. to. Um, no, no, absolutely. Saying? Absolutely. This is just my, my, <clears throat> my perspective, my perception and my, my story. That was me. I, I think I was always open and aware of something other. And I think that's why I danced as well. Apart from the fact that it was the way I expressed myself. I was a little wallflower. I was a shy little thing, very, very shy. And, uh, and didn't like talking and communicating with others. I felt really uncomfortable. I wasn't good at small talk. And so dancing was how I expressed, and I realize now how I expressed my emotions that I was not in touch with at all. So very much the spiritual life has been with me, I think, right from the word go. I was born with a Venetian veil, um, which had to, like a membrane covering my face that had to be wiped away. And my the au pair that I was handed over to at that stage, I think it must have come from her. Apparently that's a sign of clairvoyance. So it kind of, even from that stage, it was obviously a part of my life. Um, and it wasn't the family I was born into either. Weren't religious, in fact, atheists. But that was, I think, kind of was a... A good space to be because I was more open to possibilities and I was taught and guided to have my own mind and to choose you know and to find my own way through what a blessing and so yeah to, to find my way to my spiritual core my spiritual tooth and my tooth <laughs> my spiritual truth and my spiritual world what is my alignment is is absolutely my alignment and i'm sorry i i i, I no, didn't offend anybody with that it is purely my where my alignment is and where where i come from is that connection with that something other with that the magic in life the 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 that spark of divinity if you like that I'm hearing holiness, but I know that my family would immediately go, oh, yes, you guys are good. But it is, it's that kind of magical spark of, of, of the essence of who you truly are, of who we all are. And yeah, that's alignment for me. And so the fact that I'm doing something that is in alignment and I'm in alignment with what I do and then finding the alignment through that, the greater alignment through your connection through to the earth and up to source, and alignment through your energy systems, your chakra systems, and then connecting through into the core of your being, your true spiritual heart, your divinity, your inner guru, then you're talking about an even deeper and more expanded alignment that is just 
where it's at. <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> so let's let's say someone who um whether they're an entrepreneur or whether whether they're someone who has a nine to five, let's say that they're they're sensing, okay, I think something's off in my business or the work that I do, you know, how I'm you know, making my money, whatever it might be. And they maybe they want greater alignment. How is it that um, you help them? Because I know you do help them. So how how do you are you able to support them? Well, um, I'm a, a law of attraction life law of attraction life coach like you are with Christy Whitman's QSCA. But that's kind of like the support system. And when I came out from uh, the training, it became obvious that channeling that I had done 25 years previously and been honing all those that time was at the core of what I do because the beings come through and also my coaching and my own abilities and all my the modalities that I've learned throughout the years it's like a magical toolbox my intuition helps me connect with the client energetically and things pop out but channeling when I bring through the beings of light when I bring through that higher wisdom that knows them knows what their purpose is what they want what, not just what they want what will bring them the greatest joy then it, I just let it flow and what they do is they guide them through whatever process and it will be very very individual because some people may need lots of healing before they get there some people might be open to it straight away some people will need to go on long journeys some people will be right there it will be very very individual but whenever they arrive in front of me it is perfect timing divine timing for them in whatever it is to assist them to expand in that moment and it's all about connecting them with their own inner guru their own inner wisdom their own light their own presence and joy and it's a kind of joy that bubbles up that is not like the human concept of joy when it bubbles up mm. it's like <sighs> and when you feel it and you sense it something shifts in your consciousness and your whole experience of life shifts your perception your perspective everything about your life will shift once you connect with that joy and it's finding each individual pathway to that or for them to to be open to gain assistance from the being of light but even then the being of light is kind of assisting them on their path that they probably already know and just guiding them gently that are around there with a little shove every now and then <laughs> <laughs> at the right moment at the right moment but yes uh, yeah yeah so you can book a session with Suli, a channeling session with Suli, and I'm going to pop a uh, link up on the screen. And I know it's a little long. You can just take a quick screenshot of this and then go there, and you can book a session with Suli. And um, just as she described, have that experience of I'm going to say the way you, you said joy coming through and. <gasps> Well, I, I probably did that a little more dramatically, but it, it was like a breath of fresh air is what I got. It's like, you know, inhaling for the first time after not realizing how long maybe you've been holding your breath. Um, I did, I feel like some light bulbs may have gone off as I just said that. Like, I I can relate to that, you know, having the, that moment. And so um, I ch definitely check it out. Ch can, you know, schedule a session with Suli because it'll be very refreshing and insightful for you. Um, Suli, I want to tell everyone where they can also go to connect with you on Facebook. You have a community. Um, well, your Facebook page is Suli's Musings and the link there, they can either uh, go to Facebook and type in Suli's Musings or they can go to at Pathways to Your Joy. Either one of those will connect you there. Um, but you also have an online community called Heart Space. Would you like to tell everyone about that and what you provide there? Yes, I'd love to, because actually you were the person. I hope you don't mind me sharing that. That's okay. That ignited it. Is that okay? Absolutely, yeah. So I one of the first workshops, in fact, it probably was the first workshop that I ever did, and Kim was there, bless her heart. And she came up to me afterwards and she said, Suli, I had no idea that other people felt how I felt, that experienced what I was experiencing. You should start a group a community and as she was saying it 
bing, there was this huge container of light that was already there and it was heart space. And I got this sense of the beings of light had created this space. Uh, and thank goodness for Kim in that moment and synchronicity and serendipity coming together beautifully and igniting this space that is like, uh, in fact, um, one of the uh, first the first members who is still there went away and came back. She describes it as a divine womb. It's a place where you can mm. just be yourself, where you can be held. There are beautiful heart-centered people in there. We're all in varying stages of awakening. We're supporting each other, cheering each other on. Um, and there are all sorts of things that happen in there. But the beings of light are very, very much present there. And you're transmitted to from the moment you enter that space, if that makes sense. So they're with you uh, very, very in a very um, palpable way from then on, uh, assisting you and supporting you. So thank so you so for that. Oh, you're so welcome. You should, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I get ideas like that all the time. And, and you're one of the people who's like ran with it and you, and, and it's so awesome to see how, um, how that's become, you know, become of this beautiful space that you've created for others. And so, um, so for anybody wanting to connect with Suli at a, you know, in a face, it's a Facebook group, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's um, a subscription community, but it's Facebook based. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And in there you do like live group group channelings for people who want um, maybe to connect with you and you're channeling more frequently, correct? Yes, we have we have a, a Q and A once a month where we can all meet up and people can ask questions, have a channeled okay. message, sometimes a healing. And uh, whenever possible, we do a sharing each month, which might be we had we did a land healing recently that I opened to the public um, for one of our members and um, all sorts of things. I do a, a musings every week. I pop on and answer any questions that might have popped up in the group. And uh, usually a channeling happens and some awesome juiciness comes out of that every week at some point uh not at some point every time so yeah there's all sorts of things happening in it <laughs> that's easy for me to say um and there's lots of humor and there's lots of humor and there's lots of laughing and it's just a lovely space and there are people that go away and come back and at the moment it's funny the the space is is full of people who i feel and i get a sense have reached a stage where they've asked all the questions that they need to ask at this moment and what it feels like and i actually got the message today that there's there's a pause now waiting for an influx of new people who are ready to ask the question that who need that support initially uh, and just like you were saying i'm not alone there are other people who think and feel like me or, or I, I know that, but I would love to be in a supportive space where I can talk all things, crystal energy, frequency, uh, angels, fairies, even, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Oh, my family's well, going to love me. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. You're being you and I love it. I am out of the box. I'm out of the box. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> too late <laughs> too late <laughs> i hear you um so okay so Lee, when does your book launch so you so let's put this up for everyone again so success with source um it's a uh, anthology of women's stories about bringing vibrational alignment into their business through their personal stories and when does this book launch and where can people go to learn more about the book okay so the link for the um, launch of the ebook, which is on the 7th of July, put that in your diaries. <laughs> um, that goes out actually on the day. And so I'll share it everywhere and I'll share it with you, Kim, and hopefully you okay. can share it with your people. Um, come along for that day because you get a chance to buy the ebook for just 99 cents. So, you know, that would be wonderful. It would support the women in the book, it would support the book, but it would also give you the book for pretty much I mean peanuts really so yeah. okay. so that's the 7th of July and then I think it's the 19th the paperback will be launched okay. um, but I think there is also a uh, the publishers are uh, a sole purpose publishing uh, Dina Murray and I think you can also join a fan club so that you get notified of, of the special dates and what have you 
or you can or you can contact me uh, through Suli's musings um if you want to go on the list to get the link um for the the the, the lift off definitely definitely come along i think there are going to be about four or five calls that day to cover all the different time zones and i'm intending to be on every one of them so fingers crossed because there'll be a big celebration and you'll get the opportunity to share the excitement with us i mean you you know you've you've, you've experienced this yourself so i'm so excited i'm a newbie but I, I'm... I yeah sorry no, no, go ahead no no you you no. you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so, so to find out more about the book and get access to Success with Source, connect with Suli over on her Facebook page, Suli's Musings, or it's also at Pathways to Your Joy, either way, and be looking for those posts and, and the links. So that sounds easy. That's, and I also have another Facebook page, which, oh, a yeah, Facebook group, okay. which is, which is free called Messages from the Guardians of Nature. And it's very much connected with, all things magical that through the veil the, the the fairies elves all of that kind of stuff and they're also connecting with nature which i think is so important so important having a deeper connection with nature you can also contact me or or, or come and have a look come and have a look and sometimes the guardians of nature come through and bring messages through there as well so yeah thank you absolutely absolutely silly what um what would you like them to take away from today's conversation? Age is just a number. You said that. Absolutely. That would be at the top of my list. Age is just a number. Be who you are. Be true to who you are. Follow your heart. Because as Fywomus always says, he says, try to stop analyzing, dearest one, because no amount mm. of analyzing will get you there. He says, uh, it's experiential. Um, mm. how is, does it make you feel and he says um uh it, 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 it's it's come on violence help me with this give me a little there's a bit of, of conscious channeling here um the heart knows what the mind you know how is it here how is it so violence, you're, you're not being you're not helping me here the heart knows what the mind can only begin to no no the mind I've forgotten it. Come on, Thomas. <laughs> Maybe it's, he wants to come through. No, I, I you know what, Suli, I was going to open, I was going <laughs> to invite you to do that if you wanted to, but I, I don't know. I, I wasn't sure. But, would well, you maybe like to to? Claret, may, I think that's why he's jumbling me up. He's like, <laughs> he, he loves, he loves the stage. As soon as he has a moment to come through. No, it's not. It's, it's because he likes to, to transmit and to assist. But maybe he'll come through and he'll help me clarify this because it's such a beautiful, powerful experience so violence do you want to come through and say namaste dearest ones never want to shy away from an opportunity namaste i am violence dearest one so let us see if we can calm this channel for a moment as you receive this transmission <sighs> beautiful and maybe it will be reframed in a new way and maybe that is why she was not quite remembering it so let me see as you connect with your hearts perhaps place your hands on your hearts and this is something you can do at any time slow down breathe become aware of your breath become aware of that oxygen nourishing your whole body system and as you do, you are containing and you are transmitting and you are receiving light. And as you breathe out, allow for the tensions to move away. Allow your heart to be your guide. Allow your heart, which is your truth, and we are not talking about your physical heart, although that is very connected with your physical heart. Which, but actually has more of a, um, a cognizance, if you will, than the, the brain that is magnificent, your main brain. It is magnificent, absolutely magnificent, that your heart will guide you to the truth. You will find ways by connecting physically through your hands, through your breath, 
through your awareness, through your intuition, with your spiritual heart, close to and connected with your physical heart, because your heart knows the truth. Your heart knows the truth and your mind, there is no way your mind will get you there. There will be an approximation. There will be information that will be of assistance. And we, we are not discounting the mind by any means. It is a wonderful tool. It is magnificent and is also opening to more of the truth in every now moment. But it is your heart that knows. It is that your heart that knows the truth. And we are still finding it hard to find the words, but it doesn't matter because the transmission contains that truth. Basically, it is saying that you will not get there with any amount of analyzing. And so we give you a simple process now to drop from your head and the chatter of your mind to your heart. Namaste. 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 And from this space, with your ability and your intention and your practice, you will find your way. Just be aware, beloved ones, of when you bounce back up into the analytical mind, that for the purpose of this exercise is of no real benefit. Be aware of when you jump up into the mind and start to, how does this work? What's this for? How does this? No, 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 no. Namaste, 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 namaste. Breathe into your heart. You cannot get it wrong, beloved ones. You cannot get it wrong. We will leave it there because we feel that that is enough because you are receiving the transmissions that go directly to the core of your being directly to the truth, directly to your heart that knows. Namaste, I love you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so was... frustrated that the words weren't coming and he's like, doesn't matter, it's not important. But I'm like this. Come on, come on. But, and if they do, I will share them with you, Kim. And you can. <laughs> I, you know, I think I think you know the gist was there. So we we yeah. I think have a feel for you know exactly what you were saying, the sentiment, and um and you know as you're channeling, the, I had some questions that I was like, oh maybe I should ask these, but I'm going to not. I'm going to let it be because I think that one of the central messages of what um of what viral miss of what you were saying just now is about letting go the over analyzation. And so, and so for anybody out there who's, who can relate to that, um, I just want to say, you know, you're not alone. Like to me, um, my journey, I remember years ago, um, it, and we're not saying anything's wrong with asking questions. That's not what we're saying. But when you continue to throw in more and more questions and process everything from the brain, rather than like Suli was saying, drop down into the heart, we keep hitting roadblocks up here. And so it, there's the connection piece and you want to make sure that you're getting down here so you get the deeper message. And I get it. I remember years ago, Suli, when I, I used to go to this weekly meditation group and um and I was, I was the one who always had like tons of questions and stuff. Cause I, I really, I loved this stuff and I really want ate it up and I wanted to know more. And, um, but inevitably I was just kind of like, I had so many questions trying to figure it all out from up here. I remember at one point someone said, Kim, get out of your, and I always get it wrong. Kim, get out of your left brain, you know, or get up, whichever, whichever side it is. Um, <laughs> And you get out of your left brain because I get it, right? So it's a process to kind of do that unraveling of like releasing, open up this, open up this, open up this, and get to that subtle, more subtle listening space of the heart, of the body. And I want to go back to what you were saying. I love that you use the word experiential 
earlier. It's not about figuring it all out up here. Yes, the mind can help you, and it's only a fraction of it because there are some things in life we don't get experience without taking action. And so you got to get into your body to do that. So I just, I love how you brought that piece into it, the experiential piece of it. Oh, yes. And the interesting thing is, is that more and more recently, I know that there's a spiritual kind of movement where you transcend and you, 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 the ego, the death of the ego. That's not my experience. And that's not why I feel where it, that it's more about being fully physical in your physical body. I was spaced out and out of my body most of my young life totally and out of touch with my physical body my emotions who I was where I was to be in physicality and to also be able to experience all of it and be able to find a way of navigating through all of it the 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 ups the downs the 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 mud the 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 light the the dark every all of it in your physical form that's where it's at and that's where that's where it and that's what Viomus wants us all to be it's it's to experience humanity experience being human not a, a transcendence thing it's more of an absolute understanding of what it is to be human and then from that space connecting with the truth of who you are and experiencing that joy um yeah so it is very much about being human and being in physicality yeah i I, I love that because that absolutely relates to what my experience has been too. And so go, co coming right back to vibrational alignment, vibrational alignment is not something that only takes place up here. It's all of it. It's the human experience, the spiritual experience, all of it. And I, I love that you added that in because I think that is a a misconception myth. Um, and that's not, I also just want to say that's not to discount the person who is having that more just solely up here experience. Uh, you know, everyone's going to have the experience oh, yes. that's right for them, but yeah. but you'll know what's right for you based on what feels good. And, mm -hmm. and yes, I, I, I relate to what elevated my spiritual experience was realizing the relevance and importance of connection with my human experience and having that more expanded alignment with both um so exactly exactly yeah and that that is true alignment i i i feel is being fully in your physical body um and then that's another thing varmus says he he says that you what use would it be dearest one if you were not experiencing what it is to be physical that's why you're here you are here to experience being human, being a part of humanity, and all of the, all of that, what that entails, and and also finding your way to the love. I mean, because the truth of the matter is, it's all about the base note of the universe, the eternal on the frequencies of pure divine unconditional love that is within you, and that you are a part of. And I'm going off on a tangent. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, so, but, but I'm still yeah. in physicality. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's beautiful, Sue. It's beautiful. So oh, I, I want to remind everyone where they can go to connect with you. Um, you can go to at Pathways to Your Joy on Facebook, also known as Suli's Musings. And Suli, do you have the link? Um, I'm going to put this up on screen too. Is the link to schedule an appointment with you probably also linked to your Facebook page or somewhere in there? Um, yeah. Oh gosh, that's a question now. I think it is, but I'm not 100% okay. sure that's something I should check up on. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. I, so so anybody wanting to connect with Suli and schedule a session, take a screenshot of this, write this down, the link that's on the screen here and you can do that or um go to her Facebook page because it sounds like you'll probably link it there or post it again soon so they yeah. have access to it. Okay. Mhm. Mm Wonderful. Suli, thank you so much for being here today and um, just being you and sharing what you had to share about vibrational alignment, coming back into physicality and, uh, you know, of course, how this all connects to, of course, your personal business, but how what you do can help other people in their business, whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a nine to five, whatever it is that you do, you help people gain more vibrational alignment with with what's in alignment for them so i think it's beautiful yes beautiful thank you thank you absolutely well so suli what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead did you have any final words that you wanted to share before i put you in the line? um no i just say just 
find that place where you are comfortable with who you are, with who you be. Um, and yeah, as Vyma said, your heart will find, will help you. As I connect with my heart, I see a pathway, a kind of golden pathway emanating from it. And you just follow that, follow that. I think as people are hearing this today, that uh, what I want to point out for anybody that this is showing up uh, for is um, because the message is left there with focus on your heart, um, right? Like I had some additional questions that I, I think could have added even like just whatever other questions people might have. We're not going to go there because I think the point is, is to to trust what you're receiving, what is coming mm -hmm. up for you as Suli and Viomis are, are, you know, bringing the focus to your heart. What is showing up for you? Is there something that's showing up that has possibly repeatedly showed up that you have dismissed or discredited because it's not something that seems logical, tangible, acceptable, maybe something that other people would judge and dismiss but it's showing up for you for a reason. And so I think right now the task is to be trusting that and recognize that you were the one that gives yourself permission to take action on it and trust what you're receiving. Uh, that's what I want to add to that. Beautiful. Perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, Suli, I'm going to go ahead and just, um, I'm going to drop you back down to the lobby while I close out the show and then I'll see you there at the uh, as soon as we end here. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for being here and sharing what you did. Oh, thank you. <sighs> okay. So what are you taking away from today's conversation? What's showing up for you? There are lots of different concepts. Of course, I just highlighted the whole, um, you know, emphasize the whole aspect of you listening to your heart, like, like Suli was saying, right? Listen to your heart. That's where it is. You know, your, your mind ultimately can only decipher a fraction of what the heart can tune into and receive. And I think sometimes that's also the element of it. Are you open enough to allow yourself to receive that message? And, and e even going to what I was just saying a second ago, you may be incredibly open. You're just not trusting it. You're not seeing the value in it. If you recognize that you're in that middle ground space of learning to trust the messages that you're receiving, that can be like, a, it can feel like a scary place, it can, right? It's scary in the sense of, oh no, what if I do trust it and take action on it, right? And then what are the consequences? You know, the, the consequence is greater alignment. The consequence is relief because you're finally allowing yourself to receive more rather than resisting it and blocking it and shutting it off. And, and anyway, I could go on and on and on and on and on about that. So I'm going to stop, but um, yeah, you're, you know what, you are encouraged to listen to whatever it is that your heart is telling you. And isn't it wonderful to know that there are people like Suli who actually have spaces, containers where you can do that in a trusting, loving, safe space to be free and open up to who you are and your alignment. So hmm, let me know what you're taking away from today's conversation in the comments, wherever you watched or listened today. We were on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and of course, all of the podcast platforms. I love hearing from you. Leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what you're taking away. Remember that every day is always a new day. And that is also a metaphor for every moment. You can choose right now here in this moment to make a new decision and switch into that new experience that is opening, freeing, and expanding. <sighs> I will leave it there. Have an amazing day, everybody. I will see you all again very, very soon.